Hi, I'm Denji, and in today's episode of My Self Hosting Series, we're going to take a look at how you can install your very own PeerTube instance. Before I begin with the tutorial, I'll just explain what PeerTube is. PeerTube is your own self-hosted, federated, and decentralized version of YouTube. I'll explain what that means. Well, you know what self-hosted means. It means that you run it off either your own hardware or a VPS or something like that, and then you can access your own website by your own domain, which you should have if you're going to be doing this. You should have a domain, and you can watch your own videos. You can upload them. You can like them. You can comment them. You can do everything you can do on YouTube. The difference is, is that this is, you know, self-hosted, which means, you know, there's no real rules as to what you can upload within the realms of legality, of course. And there's also the features of federation and decentralization. Whenever I watch a video on PeerTube, so clicking on just any video of mine, I connect to peers. As you can see here, I only have one peer, that being the server I'm currently watching this video off. And if more people were to watch this video, so as you can see, it has five views. If those people were online, then I would have have multiple peers to connect to. It's the same thing as BitTorrent, where when people download a file, they begin seeding it, which means that when I download the same file, I begin downloading it for multiple people who are seeding it at that moment. This works in the same way. So if there's multiple people online at the moment with that PeerTube data, then I can connect to them and the video loads faster. In this sense, PeerTube is more bandwidth efficient the more people watch the video, which is a very good thing because normally with these self-hosted video sites, there's a lot of bandwidth usage. The federation feature of PeerTube essentially lets any instances that follow you have your videos show up on them. And if you were to follow any other instances, then their videos would begin showing up on yours. For example, if I were to follow Luke Smith's PeerTube over here by copying his domain address and putting it here in my follow domain, then I would send a request to follow him. Soon enough, Luke Smith's videos will start showing up on my instance. But anyways, that was a demonstration of how PeerTube actually works. Now let's take a look at how we can install it on our own server. So I've got Debian Buster over here. That's Debian version 10. And we're going to go over to the NEOS recommended guide. Now, before we do any of these things, we want to go to the dependencies guide first and install all the dependencies over here. So we're going to skip the Debian Ubuntu derivative section, which is right here. And the first thing we're going to want to do is install these packages. And these are already installed on my system. But if you want to install them, run this command as root. Then there's a tip over here to disable root access and do the rest of the entire tutorial as a user without root access, which is what I'm doing at which is what I'm doing right now. I'm signing as Alex, which is a user that has root privileges, but does not have direct root access. The next thing we're going to want to do is install Node.js 12, which you can install by clicking on this button over here, then just go to Node.js binary distributions. This will be linked in the description, so you don't have to do any of that. Scroll down all the way until you reach a section that says Node.js version 12.x and go to the Debian section, because we are Debian, and copy paste these two commands and run it as root. So we're going to want to change to root just like that and then run those two commands and just give it a second. As you can see, it's now installed. And if you run the node command, you'll see that, well, node works. So Node.js version 12 is now installed. We can exit the root user and close this entire thing. And now instead, we're going to want to install yarn. So uh, you're going to want to just click over here and there's a command you can run, that being npm install dash dash global yarn. You want to run this as a super user. So sudo npm install dash dash global yarn. And then it will install yarn, which is the build system for node. All right, now we're just going to want to install a bunch of packages. And for this, you can essentially just copy paste the command and run it uh, just like that. But I'm not going to do this because I already have all these dependencies installed in my system. Once you've installed all those dependencies, the two things you have to pay attention to are Redis and PostgreSQL. So these are two packages you'll be installing here, PostgreSQL and a Redis server. These two run as daemons in the background, which means you have to start them right now. And by default, when you install any daemons on Debian, it automatically enables them on boot anyway. So we're going to want to run sudo systemctl start Redis PostgreSQL because while they are enabled at boot, we've just installed them and they're not started yet. So I'm going to start them right now. And as you can see, they're starting. All right, now that we're done with the dependencies, let's begin actually installing PeerTube. So we're back in the NEOS section of the guide. We're going to first of all create a user called PeerTube. So the way this entire system of PeerTube works is you should set up a user, as you can see here, called PeerTube with password PeerTube. And uh, this user will manage every single aspect of the directory var www PeerTube, which is where the videos will be stored, all the configuration for PeerTube will be stored, everything PeerTube related on the system besides the database will be stored in var www PeerTube, which is a directory that is going to create it once we run this command over here. Just in case it already exists on your system and you're reinstalling, you can run this command rm-rf then var www PeerTube and then a star just like that to remove anything that might possibly be in there. Now you can set a password for PeerTube. I'm going to give it a password 1234 because this is not something I'm actually going to be using. So 1234 is fine. And now we're going to create a database. Now when you install 
PostgreSQL, it added a user to your system called Postgres. And Postgres can create new users that it can use with its databases. So we're going to just copy paste this command and we're going to create a new database user called PureTube. Now it's going to ask us for a password to use for it. I'm going to set the password to 1234 and 1234. That's just a very insecure password. You should set a custom password to something quite secure, uh, which you can then add to the PureTube configuration. But remember this password because you will need it. Okay, now that we've entered the password, we're going to want to create a database for PureTube to actually use. So we're going to copy paste this command. And as you can see, it's going to create a database with a bunch of different features, uh, UTF-8 uh, formatting and that kind of stuff. And it's going to name it PureTube underscore prod. We're going to press enter and run that command. And as you can see, it created the database. Now we're going to just run these two commands over here, uh, sudo dash u postscript, just to add extensions to the database that it needs. So just copy paste these two and run them. It's not exactly a very complex process there. Now we're going to want to actually download and install PureTube. So, so how this works is it gives you an environment variable called version and it figures out what the latest version of PureTube is using that. So we're going to take that and uh, copy paste it in, just press enter. And as you can see, it tells us the latest version is 3.1.0. So now I've gone to var www PureTube using a CD command. So just copy pasting this. And now I'm going to create three directories as the PureTube user called config storage and versions. So there you go. Now if you list the directory, there's config storage and versions directories, which are owned by the PureTube user. Now we're going to go into the version directory and we're going to want to run these two commands. This first one is going to use that environment variable from before, which is version to download the latest version of PureTube and put it in a directory that is appropriate for its name. This is a quiet wget command, so you won't see any prompts or loading things or anything on the screen. Just give it a second to run. Okay, now that that's done, you'll see there's a new file in a directory called peertube-version 3.1.0 zip, and that's a zip file we're not going to extract with this command over here, which uses, uses the unzip command to unzip this into a directory. Once again, this is a quiet command with a dash q option, so you won't see any prompts or anything on screen. And as you can see, we now have a directory called peertube-v3.1.0 because it also removed the zip. Okay. Now we're gonna go back one directory, so cd dot dot into var www peertube, and we're going to install it. So first of all, we're going to symbolically link the two files using this command over here, which means it's gonna create a file called peertube latest and link it to that version of peertube that we just installed, so that folder. So now if you go into the peertube latest directory, it's the same contents that would be in the peertube version 3.1.0 directory. That's just for convenience, so you can easily switch and swap versions of peertube if you're updating. And now we're going to want to run the following command, over here, where it goes into PureTube latest and uses yarn to install everything. So just run that command. It will take a while depending on the speed of your server, but this is actually going to compile and install PureTube. Okay, so now it's done. Just to clarify these warnings and things, you can ignore those. So I'm going to clear the screen now, and I'm going to go back to the previous directory because we're now going to do some configuration. Scrolling down to the configuration section over here, we're going to want to use this command to copy over a default.yaml file that's for configuration. We're not going to edit that file, but we are going to edit this file that we're going to copy over with this command over here. Uh, it's config production YAML. So we're going to want to use our editor of choice, in my case, vim. So sudo vim. Remember, you have to use sudo privileges because this entire directory is only technically meant to be accessed by the PureTube user. So I'm going to do sudo vim config production.yaml, which is, you know, in the config directory. So we have to change a few things here. Like, for example, the web server, we're going to want to change the host name to our actual host name. So in today's uh, example, I'm using test.denshi.live, a host name that has an A entry, so a regular, you know, website entry that points towards the IP address, the public IP address of the server. So that's the domain I'm going to be using. You have to set this correctly. Otherwise, authentication and various other things will not work in PureTube. So uh, the port was 443 because we want SSL. So we're going to scroll down over here and we're going to go to the database section. And as you can see, uh, it gives us a username and password for PureTube. And as you remember, we created a database user for PureTube and set its password to 1234. So we're going to want to put our password in here. We also want to configure a few more things in here. If you have a mail server and you want PureTube to be able to send mail to verify users, that kind of thing, if you want to enable that, then you can edit all this kind of stuff. Now, I'm not going to do that because I don't have it. Also, ignore this admin email over here. This is only for um, self-signed certificates, which we're not going to be using today. So scrolling down more and more, there's different customizations where you can decide where you store all your various videos and that kind of stuff. It's going to scroll all the way down here to the admin section. So this is line 220, as you can see down there. 
and we want to change this email to your email or an email you wish to use uh, for your admin account. So I'm going to set it to my email. That's my personal email over there that I use. And it will generate a password for the administrator user at build, which is what we've already done. So now we've successfully set our email. Uh, we're going to want to write and quit. And I'm assuming you know how to use Vim if you're doing this tutorial. So we're going to write quit that configuration file. And now we're going to set our web server configuration. So uh, PeerTube works by using the Nginx web server. And with Nginx, there's two directories you got to configure, that being uh, Etsy, Nginx sites available, which contains all the websites that are available, and Etsy, Nginx sites enabled. So these are the actual websites that are on and the Nginx's server. So we're going to create a new file in sites available. Actually, we're going to copy it over from the default. So just copy paste uh, this command over here and paste it into here. And we're going to use these two set commands to change a few things. So this first set command, you want to go all the way back down here where it says uh, peer to domain, delete the square brackets too. And we're going to put test.denshi.live or whatever domain you're using for your peer to press enter. And the next one you can basically just copy paste because I'm assuming we're not going to be changing our peer tube host. It runs on port 9000. And unless you want to use a different port, maybe that conflicts, then I don't think you really have to change that. If you want to do further configuration, you can edit it, but I'm not going to do that. Now we're going to run this command over here to symbolically link that file to uh, the sites enable directory, just like that. And now comes the certificate part. So uh, as long as you've set that domain correctly, this step will have no issues. The first thing you are going to want to do is stop nginx if it's currently running. So I'm going to stop it right there. So that's sudo system CDL stop nginx. So that stops the daemon. Now we're going to run this command over here uh, where it generates a nice little uh, domain for us. But you can delete this last part with the post hook because we can just do that later. Just sudo certbot cert only dash dash standalone. And then we can specify our domain with dash d. So in this case, we're going to specify domain test dot denshi dot live just like that so we're gonna press enter and it's gonna generate us a certificate as you can see i've already generated one you won't get this prompt if you haven't but in, in my case i have generated one so i'm gonna renew and replace it with the option number two just give it a second while it verifies it and as you can see it's done so now uh we can restart nginx so pseudo system ctl restart nginx just like that we want to go to the systemd section because we're going to copy over a systemd daemon to run peer tube so we're going to copy this daemon called peer tube uh, to our systemd system directory, which means we're going to be able to enable it just like we do with Nginx and PostgreSQL and everything. And if you want, you can edit it, but I'm not going to edit it. And now comes the moment of truth. We're going to enable and start peer tubes, pseudo system CTL, enable dash dash now peer tubes. So that means it turns it on a boot, so it enables it, and it starts it right now, peer tube. And if you really want to check the status of peer tube, you can run and and sudo system CTL, sudo journal CTL dash FEU, PeerTube, which tracks PeerTube and what it's doing. So if you run this command right now, you'll begin to get this prompt, which is what PeerTube is currently doing. It started the PeerTube daemon. It's going to begin running everything. Give this a second to launch because it might take a second. Okay, so once it's actually started, you'll see all this stuff on screen. At some point, it will tell you that it has successfully started the server. But anyway, now if we actually go to the website itself, so test.denshi.live, you'll see that, yeah, it shows prompts on screen that shows that I am indeed logging in. And here we are. We're now in our own PeerTube instance. Before we actually do anything, we want to sign into our administrator account. So if we log in, we're going to want to uh, we'll type in our email address, of course, which we set before in the production.yaml file. And to find the password, we can actually go check the PeerTube logs. So that's quite easy to do. Uh, we're going to want to use sudo, though. We're going to sudo vim uh, storage logs, and then it should be PeerTube.log, which is located once again in the PeerTube root directory for www PeerTube. And if we look through it with our vim text editor, we can just search for the term password. And there you go. It's right there. Dojim mobile rose Zima. All right, then. So I guess I'm going to just put it so you can see it. Uh, not that this is even public, so it doesn't even matter. Doge Mobilurozima. Just to sign into the admin account. So I'll log in right there. You can save the password. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And as you can see, there's a little peer tube guide over here. Uh, it's time to configure your instance. All right, then configure my instance. You can go through, change the name of it. Um, I guess you could call it Denshi's Test tube or something. I don't really know. So congratulations, you've successfully created your own peer tube instance that is self hosted, you can federate it, you can do everything. Thanks for watching this video. I've been Denshi. Goodbye.